Uh, what is at the core of this impeachment? So, Alicia, this goes back three years to the fall of 2020. A number of Ken Paxton's top lieutenants, and I'm not talking about people down in his agency, I'm talking about people who sat at the right hand of Ken Paxton. They went to the FBI and said, we believe our boss, the Attorney General of Texas, is engaging in a number of crimes, including bribery and using his office. Their allegations centered on his relationship with a well-known Austin investor by the name of Nate Paul. And they believed that Ken Paxson was taking efforts to assist Nate Paul who, by the way, also was under federal investigation in, at that time. And so that then led to not only an ongoing federal investigation, but it prompted those whistleblowers to bring a lawsuit against Ken Paxton. That lawsuit was tentatively settled earlier this year for $3.3 million. And when Ken Paxton asked Texas lawmakers to fund that settlement, they said, wait just a minute. And they opened their own investigation and brought forth those investigative findings earlier this week. I want to play some sound from the proceedings today, something you actually flagged that Republican State Representative Charlie Guerin said, he, take a listen, and then we'll talk on the other side. And I would like to point out that several members of this House, while on the floor of this House doing the state business, received telephone calls from General Paxton personally threatening them with political consequences in their next election. So, so again, that is a Republican state representative saying from the podium, A.G. Paxton was phone banking members of his caucus on the floor to tell him there would be consequences. That's exactly what he said. And by the way, he didn't just say it once. He said it more than once to the entire House floor publicly because there were some back and forth discussion with Ken Paxton supporters saying, well, who exactly got phone calls and what exactly was said? But again, that representative, Charlie Guerin, who, by the way, is on the House Investigating Committee, who brought forth these 20 articles of impeachment, repeated uh, that contention, that assertion that, yes, members of the House were, in fact, getting those types of messages and phone calls from Ken Paxton himself. Tony, I've only got about a minute left, but, but I guess sort of my, my big picture political question is what the fallout is in Texas and given the role that Paxson has played in the National Republican Party, what the fallout is nationally? I think that's an open question at this point. I mean, look, Ken Paxton was resoundingly reelected to a third term just a few months ago, back in November. And so Republican senators, who, by the way, will be the jury in this upcoming impeachment trial in that chamber, they are well aware of that sort of support that Ken Paxton still enjoys across our state here.